Chapter 13. That year finally ends. Only a few weeks had gone by since getting back from Slatsville, and Gar had been enjoying getting back into the rhythm of working and relatively quiet weekends. Aside from Hope complaining about school starting, and Whimsy not being happy about how high school worked, everything had gone fairly regularly. He'd gotten to hear some interesting stories from Tilly about the start of the year, too, and how some of the kids had already started trouble in her classroom. Or the time Hope had run into her room, shouting something about a fight in the hallway before he disappeared again. Tilly had said she'd never been so scared, only to find out that the fight had already been broken up and handled. Minnow and Atoll seemed to be getting along a bit better, since they started work again, too. Gar made a small observation that Atoll made less jokes at Minnow's expense, and more about the Salmonids, things he'd heard over the weekend, or directed toward himself. Minnow had noticed it too, and brought it up to Gar briefly when leaving work one day. They were definitely appreciating the change of direction he was taking on. At the moment, though, he was just trying to sleep in on the weekend. He'd woken up a few minutes ago from the sunlight coming in through his room, but he'd chosen to roll back over and try to sleep. He'd start musing to himself, hoping it'd lull him to sleep. It was working, although his mind was drifting from subject to subject. He buried his face a bit further into his pillow, as he felt himself slowly, finally, slipping back into a dream. Except his door immediately swung open. Dad! Dad! Wake up! Hope and Whimsy were shouting at him, immediately running over to him and starting to shake him. He jumped at the sound, forcing himself to try to sit up while his kids shook him, grumbling. Huh? What? Why? You gotta wake up, Dad! Come on! Do you know what day it is? Whimsy was practically yelling in his ear. Mm. Gar moved to rub at his eye as Hope kept continuously shaking him. Guys, we told you not to wake him up. A familiar voice, Tilly's maybe, came from by the doorway. Except he was pretty sure he hadn't spent the night with her, and he hadn't invited her over to visit. Not that he minded. But he suddenly felt very confused. He blinked his eye open, looking at the blurry shape of Tilly and... Teal. Minnow by his door. He reached for his glasses. Well, there goes the surprise, Minnow mumbled. What? Gar stared at them as he awkwardly pulled his blankets a bit further over him. What are you in my apartment? Gar was trying to search for the words. We let them in. Whimsy grinned a wide smile at him. Why? Gar shifted slightly. Because we planned this. Hope answered this time. Why? Gar repeated. Because it's... Hope and Whimsy both glanced at Minnow and Tilly, who joined them in unison in saying, Your birthday! Gar furrowed his brow, blinking at them for a while, before he finally processed the words. Oh. We were going to let you sleep in and surprise you with breakfast, but I guess Hope and Whimsy didn't hear us right. Tilly was casting a playful glare at the kids, who were giving her innocent smiles. We'll still do the breakfast thing. It's just going to have less surprise flavor in it, if you know what I mean. Minnow raised their eyebrows. Uh, oh, okay. Gar squinted, still feeling deeply confused. Well, uh, looks like you need a minute to wake up. Tilly cleared her throat. We'll leave you to- Many locusts, scatter! Minnow shouted, and Hope and Whimsy immediately ran out the room and toward the living room or kitchen. Many locusts? Gar looked over at Minnow with confusion. Yeah, they have a lot in common with locusts. Minnow grinned as Tilly looked back down at the hall, at wherever the kids went. They prefer to be called the swarm, and they eat everything in sight. They snapped their fingers. They're just mini versions because they're kids. For now. Minnow glared down the hallway. Huh. Gar looked down at his bed. 
Anyway, have a nice wake up. And take your time. Till you grabbed Minnow's wrist. We'll have some waffles and things ready for you. She smiled. And then half dragged Minnow down the hallway. Come on, Minnow. She muttered. Gar watched Tilly quickly backtrack briefly, shut the door for him before returning back the way she was headed, and Gar finally relaxed. He immediately tried to start processing what just happened. His kids had shaken him awake and woken him up at an early hour till his partners in, who were going to surprise him with a visit. Then they'd all spoken simultaneously to remind him that it was his birthday, and were going to make him breakfast. He shook his head slightly as he moved to try to stand up. He thought it was strange, but nice, that his partners wanted to surprise him, and that they would have tried to let him sleep in a little longer anyway, if Hope and Whimsy had listened. It was definitely different from his other birthdays. Not the part where Hope and Whimsy had woken him up, though. That was normal. He slowly stood up, walking to his bathroom to start probably trying to wake up and mentally wishing he would have known that they were going to burst into his room, because maybe then he wouldn't have worn a tank top and shorts. Not that it mattered really, but every time he wore them around Tilly and Minnow, especially since Tilly had frozen in his doorway, though that had been a year ago now. He tried to clear his head for the most part, for now. He'd just get changed before he left and joined them in the kitchen. It was fine. Not like it mattered much to him anymore. Gar tried not to take too long getting ready, even though they told him to take as long as he wanted. Minnow had ended up making him some coffee, and Tilly cooked some fancy-looking breakfast, which Whimsy boasted about decorating. Hope told Gar about how hard his job was, which was primarily to stay away from the stove. Gar tried not to laugh as Hope had told Gar about just how much of a challenge that was in the most dramatic way he could. After they finished breakfast, his partner started talking about going somewhere together, but wouldn't say exactly where they were planning to go. Hope and Lindsay kept hyping it up and saying he'd love it, but any time he'd ask them about where it was, they'd suddenly change the subject. He gave up trying to guess or figure out the answer. He was still eager to find out, and excited when they left the house to actually go wherever it was they were going, after an hour or so of getting ready and talking about it. He still thought this was weird for a birthday. He was used to mostly just sitting around for his birthday, or letting Whimsy help him make a cake. He would sometimes go out for dinner, though that was more for the kids than himself. Of course, he did enjoy the aspect of not cooking something, so in that sense, it was also for him. But he never had anyone over. He never had someone to make him breakfast. Hope would always say that he was sure Gar would rather have a clean stove than burnt eggs, and Gar couldn't disagree with him. He certainly never went anywhere. Especially a surprise somewhere. He brought himself out of his thoughts as he realized everyone was coming to a stop on the sidewalk, turning to look at him. Every single one of them had a stupid grin on their face. He blinked at them. All right, Gar, are you ready for... Minnow tried to say, but was abruptly cut off by Hope. Trout, no, let me do it. Minnow made a playfully angry face at Hope, rolling their eyes. Fine. Okay, Dad, get ready for the most boring thing ever, but you'll find it exciting because you're super boring. Hope snapped his fingers and pointed them at him like finger guns. That wasn't what I was going to say, Minnow said with wide eyes. If you can read, you're gonna love this. Hope pointed at a sign to a building. What do you mean, if? You know clam well he can read. Minnow held out their hands and was looking at Hope in shock, casting apologetic glances at Gar. He's got that old people eye, you know? Hope smirked. I'm not that old. Gar frowned. Nah, you're right. You're practically ancient. Hope waved his hand. Hope? Whimsy growled at him. Not enough? Uh, decrepit. Hope had a wide grin on his face. I'm not... 
guard took a deep breath inside. Never mind. He tried to turn his attention to the sign he was previously told to read. He stared at it for a minute, trying to block out the noise from Minnow and Hope arguing, while Tilly made tisk noises at them and shook her head. He finally managed to focus enough on the sign instead of whatever Hope was saying about him, then immediately looked down from it. You can't be mean to him on his birthday. Tilly was shaking her head at Hope. I'm not being mean. I'm old on my birthday. He's old on his birthday. That's the rule. And also, he's like twice my age. So he's like an artifact to me. Hope waved his hand. I've never been so disappointed in my whole life. Minnow choked on the words. Artifact? What else am I supposed to call? Hope tried to speak. Hope, shut up! Whimsy clapped her hands three times as loudly as she could. Dad, look, it's a very cool museum of lights. Whimsy pointed back at the sign he'd already read. I see. Gar glanced at Hope, who'd fallen silent. Are you excited? Whimsy clasped her hands together. I am. He tilted his head curiously at the building. We were trying to think of a place to take you, and I know you love lights, so... Tilly shuffled slightly. Why not take you to a place where you can stare at lights and read about them for, like, hours? Minnow hooked their arm around Tilly's. That's sweet. Gar smiled at them. He wanted to say more, and go into how thoughtful he thought the gesture was, especially given the fact that they didn't care about lights or their functions as much as he did. However, Hope was starting to hop from one leg to the other. Are we gonna go in? I heard there's big lighthouse lights in there. I think that'd be neat. Hope asked, looking from Tilly and Minnow to Gar. Yeah, you ready, Gar? Tilly blinked at Hope before asking him. Gar nodded, which resulted in Hope immediately shouting, All right, let's go! As he turned on his heel and started to march off toward the building, Minnow had an unimpressed look as they watched Hope go before they followed him, shaking their head. Gartha was kind of funny the way they were looking at him, but at the same time, it gave him a weird feeling. The way they looked at Hope was almost like a reflection of him, which he thought was strange, but he chose not to think about it any further than that, starting to follow along with the group. Once they actually entered the building, someone greeted the group at the counter, but Gar hardly heard them, immediately looking up at the ceiling, which had an assortment of all kinds of lights. He squinted to try to get a good look at some of them, before Hope cleared his throat, circled back to Gar from where he was, and tugged on his arm. Dad, we're two steps in, and you're already lost. Hope huffed. Right, sorry. Gar shook his head to clear it, looking over at Minnow and Tilly, who were by the counter. Gar brought his focus back down entirely, and walked with Hope over to the counter. By the time they got there, with Gar occasionally stopping to look at something before Hope pulled him along to keep walking, Minnow and Tilly had finished talking to the person at the counter. Minnow had their head tilted to one side and was giving Gar a wide grin. Hope nudged Gar after watching Minnow for a moment. All right, now, go forth and become a moth, father. I always knew this day would come. We're never going to see him again. Whimsy said, solemnly. Gar took a deep breath, and shook his head at them. Farewell, Gabby. It was nice knowing you. Whimsy outstretched her arms dramatically. Leave your father alone. You're not going to lose him. Till he put one hand on her hip. We'll reel him back in if it gets late. Gar hesitated for a moment, before Minnow gestured with their hand for him to walk. We're right behind you. After another second or two, Gar finally moved his attention back in front of him, and immediately got distracted by the sight of a larger and older model of a lighthouse's beacon. He stopped paying as much attention to the footsteps behind him. He'd always been fascinated with lighthouse beacons and the designs of the lenses, especially the older versions that were more complex. He watched the light rotate for a while before he lowered his gaze to actually read a bit on it. That is a giant lamp! Hope blinked at it, though Gar wasn't fully paying attention to what he was doing. Yeah, 
because it was for a lighthouse. And those are kind of huge, if you didn't know. Whimsy said, in a matter-of-fact tone that caused Hope to huff at her. You taunt me in my wrath, Hope grumbled. Gar lifted his face back up to examine the lens of the light again, looking at all the colors reflected in the edges, flinching away slightly when the light would face him, then looking back again. He always loved to look at the shimmering edges of glass. Your pupil is huge! I think I've only ever seen it this big during Squidmas, Whimsy giggled, and Gar didn't say anything in response, tilting his head at the beacon one last time before moving to look at something else. The next beacon was smaller and rounder, but still had an interesting shape and shine when it turned. He put his hand up to his mouth as he read the small plaque in front of it, which had an interesting blueprint of the design. Hope joined Gar again, shortly after he stopped reading, not saying anything yet. It's funny to see you hypnotized like that, Minna was saying as he joined him and Hope alongside Tilly and Whimsy. I'm not hypnotized. Gar muttered, and tipped his head to the side as he watched it spin. You're a sucker for all things that glow. All I'm saying is that you would be doomed if you met an anglerfish. Gar could barely see Minna lift their hands up from the corner of his eye. I would not. Gar walked in a circle around the light. You do zone out when you look at Minna too long at night. Till he laughed lightly. I can't tell if you're implying I'm an anglerfish or not. Minnow wrinkled their nose. You know I'm not, Tilly huffed. I just like lights, Gar mumbled, moving on to yet another, differently designed light. It wasn't a beacon, but it held an interesting shape. He wasn't entirely sure what the function of it was, but that made him slightly excited to get to read about it. Yeah, you do. Actually, that gives me an idea for later. Minnow trailed off. That's so ominous. Whimsy sounded judgmental. It's my job to say the ominous stuff. It's probably romantic. I'm gonna be sick. Hope made a choking noise. Oh, it so totally is romantic. Minnow sneered at him. I'm going to be ill. Hope whined louder. Quick, Hope, run away! To the chandeliers! Whimsy was already backing away, gesturing for Hope to follow her over to a hallway. Gar was still staring at the light, which was most definitely decorative, and looking at the metal wiring around it. He hardly noticed when Minnow and Tilly started talking again. Should we chase after them? Tilly asked Minnow. Nah, they'll be fine. Hope can't reach those chandeliers anyway. Minnow dismissed. There was a brief pause as Gar walked around to the other side of the light to look at it from another angle. Why do you like light so much? I haven't been able to figure that out. Tilly said after a moment. Is there a reason you love them as much as you do? The domes were always sort of dim. Gar mumbled, not really processing what he was saying. He tipped his head slightly to the side to look at the light, seeing Minnow lean curiously forward from the corner of his eye. He never liked talking about the domes. He wasn't sure why he was talking about them now. He wasn't really thinking too much about the words he was saying, though. When I moved to the surface, everything was so bright. The sun. Especially the stars. He went on a little more, walking over to another light. The lights in Inkopolis were even brighter than the stars. Neither Tilly nor Minnow said anything as Gar paced around the light before he stopped in front of the plaque in front of it. The first blackness I ever experienced was one of the brightest things I'd ever seen. All the fireworks and lights. I stayed up all night looking at it all, he said, then paused briefly before continuing. I got fascinated with them after that, all the colors and how bright it was. That makes a lot of things make sense, Minnow muttered. Yeah. Tilly was nodding as Gar skimmed over the plaque. It makes me wonder, if you didn't work for Grisco, 
would you work as a lighting technician or something? No. Gar shook his head as he lifted it back up to look at the light again. Really? Minnow sounded surprised. Yeah, I don't think I'd find it as interesting if it was my job to fix them. He blinked. Well, what would you do? Tilly asked, curiously. If I could have any job... Gar finally turned to look at Minnow and Tilly for a moment. I think I'd like to make jewelry. You want to make jewelry? Minnow suddenly seemed confused. Mm-hmm. He nodded, looking back at the lamp. I think I'd like to work with gemstones and things. That's actually super neat. Minnow's voice was genuine. That is neat, and I hope someday you'll get to do it. I think it'd be lovely. Tilly put her hands together. It was silent for a couple seconds, and then... What would you do if you could have any job, Minnow? Tilly started to speak again. I thought it'd be obvious. I like cars. I'd probably get into mechanic work if I could. Minnow shrugged. Oh, right. Tilly was bobbing her head slowly. I forget about that sometimes. You change a girl's tire and talk to her about the belt in a car for at least an hour and a half, and she just acts like that's normal. It didn't sound like Minnow was speaking to anyone in particular. What's the gauge to tell what's normal and what's not, depending on how much one likes cars? Tilly tapped her foot lightly on the floor. The amount of times I've mentioned it is not the normal level of I think cars are interesting. Minnow raised their eyebrows. My sincerest apologies. I'll get it right next time. Tilly's tone had a bit of dramatics in it. Gara walked over to the next light display, as Minnow and Tilly kept talking. He stopped listening as intensely for a while to read the plaque in front of it. He stopped for a moment after reading to look up at it, then around the room and smiled slightly. It was such a large room, with other hallways of things too. Part of him wished he'd known about this sooner, because he wasn't sure he wanted to stay here for hours, if only because he was absolutely sure his partners and kids would get bored. He was sure his partners would tolerate it for him, although he wanted them to be having fun too. But there was no way Hope wouldn't eventually say something. At least, there was always the chance to come back now that he knew it existed. He glanced again at Meadow and Tilly, briefly, as they continued to talk about whatever it was they were talking about. He definitely had to thank them later. This was one of the most thoughtful things they could have done for him, in his eyes. He appreciated it more than he could say right now, partially because he was so distracted by all the things he wanted to see and read. He turned his attention to the lights again. They spent a few more hours, which were wonderful for Gar, and long for everyone else, looking at the lights in the museum. Eventually, Hope's patience wore thin, as was expected, and he shook Gar's arm for about five whole minutes before Gar called it off. The group eventually left to get something to eat, since it was later in the day. Part of why Hope was so desperate to leave, before going home. When they got home, they spent some time relaxing. Then, Tilly said something about gifts, which led to the kids and Minnow scrambling for a second before Gar was sitting in front of a coffee table with a couple of gifts. He took the time to individually go through them, although the kids insisted their gift was last. There was something from Phoenix, which she had apparently given to Tilly before they left Splatsville on their trip. That was among the first things he opened, and it had been a string of color-changing fairy lights, which he stared at for a while, and then immediately sent Fia a probably too long-winded thank-you text. Minnow and Tilly had given him two gemstones, which made him freeze for almost two whole minutes. Minnow had given him a type of polished aura quartz, and Tilly had found a pretty cut of citrine to give to him. Minnow said they liked the colors that reflected on the aura quartz, and Tilly said the citrine reminded her of the sunshine. He turned the crystals over in his hands for a few minutes, admittedly trying not to cry, before he eventually managed to say anything. When he did finally find his words, he felt like they were also maybe too long-winded, but not enough either, considering he didn't want to get too emotional over it and have to listen to Hope make gagging noises, or for him to start groaning loudly. 
The last gift had been from the kids, who had given him a blue lava lamp. Minnow made a joke about not wanting to lose Gar to a lamp the minute he held it in his hands, and Tilly added to it with a let the games begin in her impression of an announcer's voice. Hope and Whimsy stared at him for a while until Gar tried to say his thanks, but was quickly cut off. Whimsy said something about not needing Gar's long-winded thank you speech, and Hope nodded along with her. He was allowed to give them both hugs, though, so he thought that was fine. Gar cleaned up a few things from the gifts before Pran and Molly came over, giving him more things to open, although it wasn't much simpler, in the form of a birthday card, one he put into a safekeeping box when they left. He talked with them for a while, and Molly nudged Pran at some point, which prompted her to bring up the fact that she was taking the kids for the night. Gar was slightly confused when she gave him an elbow in the side, and said something he hardly heard or barely understood. Eventually, Prana and Molly left with Hope and Whimsy, but not before having something for dinner, along with some sort of cake Molly had picked up. But once they did leave, it was fairly quiet. Minnow and Tilly asked if he wanted them to stay the night, which he did, and they expected that, seeing as they brought some of their things when they'd shown up earlier in the morning. They spent some time watching some random movie that neither Gar nor Minnow had ever seen before, but Tilly swore by, and then prepared for bed as it got later. And yet, as Gar turned the light off and tried to walk over to his bed, where Tilly was already sitting, Minnow stopped him. So, I actually have one more fun birthday gift to give you, Minnow was saying, awkwardly, after they'd moved to stand in front of him. It's almost midnight, it's hardly my birthday anymore. Gar narrowed his eye at them. Okay, but I don't count a day changing over until I go to sleep and wake up. Except for New Year's, I guess. That's different. But still, I'm still considering it your birthday. I still have a surprise for you. Minnow waved their hand in a circle. Gar stared at them for a second. He took a moment to look at the way their eyes seemed to glow in the dark, before he slowly sighed. He was tired, but he was curious, too. He glanced at Tilly, who he could see was faintly smiling from where she sat. What is it? He leaned forward slightly. You like these, right? Minnow waved their arm in front of his face. Like, your arms? Gar felt deeply confused. No! The light's on my arm, shithead. Minnow rolled her eyes slightly. Come on. Oh, yes. Gar nodded, then paused, adding quickly. That's not to say I don't like your arms, too. Before you risk doing that thing where you awkwardly over-explain, I know. Minnow cut him off. Gar shifted where he stood. Uh, anyway, I was thinking earlier, at the museum, and I had an... idea. Minnow mumbled. I think you'll like it. I want to show you something. They shuffled tightly, as if they were nervous. Gar blinked. Okay. Apologies in advance. Minnow coughed after a moment. For what? He tried to ask, but got no response. He watched Minnow take a deep breath before they immediately moved to take off the hoodie they were wearing. Tilly suddenly seemed confused from where she sat tilting her head to the side as if she didn't quite understand what Minnow was doing. Gar didn't think about it, but he was doing the same thing. Minnow had some sort of black tank top on still, and was looking up at Gar with a weird expression. I wear tank tops like this under all my clothes. I'm sure you've probably noticed it a few times, maybe? Minnow pointed at the strap on their shoulder. Right. He dipped his head. He'd honestly never paid that much attention to that particular piece of their clothing. There were a few times where it had been visible, mostly when they wore anything oversized, like his hoodies. So, you want to know why? They cast their gaze over their shoulder for a brief second, before looking back at him. Why? Gar was starting to wonder what the surprise was exactly. Minnow then moved their hands down again to take off the tank top, and Gar looked away from them. Oh, 
was the only thing Tilly had to say from where she was. Minnow, Gar started to mutter. It's a surprise, so surprise. Gar couldn't tell if Minnow sounded more or less enthusiastic to say that. I don't... Gar still didn't turn to look at them. Oh my god. From the tone of their voice, it sounded like Minnow seemed to realize he wasn't facing them. You have to look at me to understand the surprise. Gar had no clue what the surprise was exactly, though he had a few ideas. He took another moment to close his eyes and take a deep breath before turning to look at Minnow. Their lights rippled when he did, which made him hold his breath for whatever reason. They stood there, awkwardly staring at him, before they threw the tank top they'd been holding in front of them on the ground. Gar briefly glanced at the scars on their chest, before he squinted at them, still confused. I always wear those tank tops because they cover up. Minnow turned around, pointing their thumbs at their back. All this. Gar blinked for several seconds, before his brain caught up enough to comprehend what he was looking at. Hundreds of little specks of light dotted their back, covering their shoulders and running up the back of their neck. They rippled every now and again, glowing brighter, then dimming again. He'd hardly noticed he'd lifted his hand to reach out, but managed to catch himself before he set it on their back. Minna was looking over their shoulder, staring at his hand. You can if you want. He hesitated for a moment, looking at Minnow and holding their gaze, before he slowly moved to set his hand down on their back. The lights rippled again, and Gar's eye widened a bit. They felt tense, and he glanced at Minnow's face again while he felt them relax. Your hands are actually warmer than I thought they'd be, Minnow mumbled. He didn't say anything but he moved his hand slightly along their back and watched the lights get brighter again for a split second before fading. He knew Minnow did that when they were nervous, but they didn't seem too nervous at the moment, and not anymore at least. They were looking back at him with a slight smile on their face. He wondered if there were other reasons the lights would glow brighter. Your tentacles are turning teal at the ends, Tilly said. From where she sat on the bed. I've captivated him, I think. Minnow sounded entertained as they briefly turned to look at Tilly. I think it's an understatement, Tilly grinned. Gar didn't look up much from the patterns on their back. He didn't move his hand much either. They felt fairly warm, and there were a few moles on their shoulders, sprinkled every here and there on their back. He swept his fingers over one, Finding it interesting enough that Minnow's back wasn't entirely smooth, but he wasn't sure why that was. You know, Minnow started to speak again. I know my lights are usually teal, but uh... Gar looked up at their face, but they were looking awkwardly away from him this time. Want to see them not be? Minnow seemed to struggle with saying that. What? Gar tipped his head to the side. Uh, fuck. I mean, you know how your tentacles change color? Like, they're turning a bit teal right now. Minnow finally turned their attention back to him. Oh, yeah? Gar hardly ever noticed when that happened. Even though they'd already pointed out, he'd barely heard what they said. Well, uh... Minnow looked away again. Gar immediately lifted his hand away from them as he watched all the lights ripple again. Except this time, they turned to a purplish hue briefly before becoming a pink color. He opened his mouth slightly, but not to say anything. He moved his hand to sit on their back again, watching a smirk form across Minnow's face from the corner of his eye. And I thought your pupil was huge at the museum. Minnow had a laugh in their voice. Gar loved it when they sounded like that. He wanted to hear them sound like that more often. Then, the words actually processed, and he felt his face get slightly warm with embarrassment. He frowned slightly, which made Minnow's grin get even wider. Then, it faded slightly. You know, I've always been sort of nervous about this. 
Minnow said, as Gar moved his hand up to their shoulder. Just because I'm literally covered in lights, I know it's pretty obvious. They're on my face, and my arms, and my legs, and my tentacles. Minnow huffed. Gar listened, looking up from their back to their face again. And I know you, uh, like them, but I've always been kind of scared to show you my back, because, uh, I mean, one, this is slightly awkward, and two, uh, they paused. There's so many along my back, it's one of the places on me that's, I mean, literally the brightest. Gar nodded his head, slightly. I'm always scared it'll show up under my clothes somehow, which is why I always wear tank tops under literally everything. Minnow shifted slightly. That's beside the point, though. I guess I've been worried for some reason that you would find it weird or something. No, you're gorgeous, Gar said, running his hand slightly down from their shoulder to their shoulder blades. He could feel them shudder when he did that. You are so... Minnow seemed to struggle for words. I don't know how you manage to say things that make me feel stupid, or why the things you say make me feel stupid, but you do that a lot. I feel like my brain is dying. Minnow groaned. I can do that less? Gar wasn't entirely sure how he'd do that. No, please don't. Minnow shook their head. It fell silent for a bit again, with Gar fixating as Minnow's light slowly faded back to teal. Gar kept having to remind himself to breathe, watching as the lights changed hue with his breath held and his eye wide. Kelly watched from the corner of his eye with slight amusement. Actually, I'm curious. Tilly spoke up, turning to look at Minnow. Do you normally sleep with the tank tops on? Or just when you come to spend the night? Uh, I actually like to sleep, like, with my oversized shirts, or sometimes no shirt, I guess. But I've, uh, been nervous to do that when we sleep together. Minnow shuffled slightly where they stood. Oh, gotcha. Tilly bobbed her head up and down for a moment, then looked at Gar. That makes me a bit curious about you, too. What? Gar lifted his head to look over at her. Do you normally sleep in t-shirts and things? Or is that only something you do when we stay the night? She asked. Uh, normally, yes. There is... Always a non-zero chance one of the kids will come swinging into my room at midnight every night. He glanced behind him at the door. I'd rather not, he frowned. The kids aren't here tonight, though. Minnow finally turned around to face Gar. And you locked the door. Gar felt like he should be, but wasn't, following. And I mean, I've already got mine off... If you wanted... Minnow looked up at Gar and blinked. I'm confused. Gar closed his eye for a moment. Are you asking me to... If you want to... Tilly interrupted. He stared at her for a few seconds. It sounds really weird to ask you to take your shirt off, but like, I think it would be... Cool. If you did that. Probably because I'm curious about why you haven't done it before now. Minnow coughed. A few reasons. Gar narrowed his eye at them. I, uh... We've been together for a couple months. It never felt... He wrinkled his nose. Right? Tilly said for him. And he nodded. I mean, now seems like a cool time, though? Considering... They looked down at himself, then back up at him. Right, but... He cleared his throat. I, uh, have some scars on my back that... He winced. They don't look good. Oh. Tilly shifted to put her hands in her lap. I think I've seen them, Minnow said abruptly making Gar tense a bit at the idea. 
till you suddenly looked extremely curious. When, uh, you were changing your shirt, you were turned around. Minnow stood up a little straighter. I mean, I didn't get the best look in the world, but I think you worry about it more than you should, Minnow said, awkwardly. Gar almost entirely forgot about that, moving his attention to the floor. He let the words slowly turn over in his mind. He never really cared about his other scars, but the ones on his back were particularly awful. He was always anxious to imagine someone else seeing them, especially when he couldn't really see them himself without a mirror. You obviously don't have to if you don't want to, but... Tilly was sitting at the edge of the bed now. I don't think any scar can exactly be... She seemed to be rethinking her sentence as she spoke. Well, to put it one way, I don't think it will change at all how we view you. You're beautiful, with or without them. Hmm. Gar bit at his cheek. You are really pretty, but yeah, please write. You don't have to do that if you're not ready for it. Minnow laughed awkwardly. Gar glanced between them and Tilly, trying to process what Tilly and Minnow had said. He was nervous about it. The idea that they might not like the scars or find them sickening in any way. At the same time, it would be nice to know whether or not they were being genuine when they said that they thought he was beautiful, with or without them. He took a deep breath in. This is going to be awkward. He muttered, more to himself. Huh? Till he hummed from where she was sitting. Gar has dated again, trying one last time to weigh his options in his head. Although, he'd already really made his decision. He grabbed the edge of his shirt, taking another deep breath in before finally moving to take it off. This felt so stupid to be doing, and incredibly awkward. But he was a bit too tired to care about how silly or strange it was, just that he felt incredibly anxious all of a sudden. Especially when... God fucking damn! Minnow's eyebrows were raised as Gar folded his shirt over his arm. It fell completely silent after that, with Minnow suddenly looking up to meet his eye. Tilly was staring at Gar, not paying much mind to... whatever Minnow had said. Her face, from what Gar could see, was turning a bit pink. What? Gar scrunched his nose. Uh, Minnow cleared their throat. It was quiet again for a few seconds. What did you say? Gar asked again. I think it was cod fucking damn. Minnow repeated himself. No, I mean, why? Gar struggled. Uh, they shuffled their feet awkwardly looking up at him. I mean, you know. I don't, but you've said it, or something like it, a few times before, and I don't understand. He blinked. Minnow clapped their hands together, loudly, shifting their gaze down on him for a second, then back up. So, really simply put, you are... muscular. Their voice wavered. Gar didn't say anything. And I just think, you know, that's damn worthy. Minnow offered him a very crooked smile. What does the damn mean, though? Gar pressed. What do you think it means? Minnow huffed. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Gar drug his hand down his face. Oh my god. You're extremely hot. That's what that means. Minnow choked. What? Gar felt like that explanation hit him in the face more than it should have. What? You sound shocked. Minnow paused, and then continued dramatically. Oh my god. I think my boyfriend is hot. A revelation of the century. I... Gar really wasn't sure how to respond to that. Did you hear that, Tilly? I'm attracted to my partner. Absurd. 
Minnow made hand motions like their mind was exploding. Damn, was all Tilly had to say, but not really directed to what Minnow had said, given she was still staring at Gar. Gar felt like he had to cough. See? She thinks so too! Minnow turned back to Gar. Oh, wait. Tilly suddenly seemed to remember where she was. Sorry, I'm sorry. Gar was absolutely certain his face was on fire, or some equivalent. I think you look very, um, nice. Yes. Or what Minnow said. Tilly was trying and failing to find the word to say. Um, Gar fidgeted with the shirt he was holding. So sorry for speaking my truth. Minnow apologized, though it was absolutely not genuine. If you can call me gorgeous, I think I can get away with calling you hot. Oh, okay. Gar barely choked out. Would it be better to say handsome? Tilly asked. No, I think I'm just not able to understand what you're saying to me. Regardless. Gar put his hand to his forehead. This is very weird. Yeah, you're right. It could always be weirder, though, Minnow said, slowly starting to grin. Like, if I said, Minnow? Tilly interrupted, but that didn't really do anything to stop them. I really want to sleep on that. They pointed at him. I feel like I've said this too much. What? Gar tried not to sound as desperate for clarity as he was. Your chest. I want to lay my head on you. Minnow's lights rippled slightly when they said that. That sounds super weird, doesn't it? They clicked their tongue. Uh... Gar buffered for another few seconds. Sort of. I see what they mean, though I don't think I'd ever say it like they did at first. Tilly set her head in one of her hands. Can I, though? Minnow asked. Uh... Gar looked back and forth from Minnow and Tilly. Sure? He said, awkwardly. Can you sleep in the middle so we both can? Tilly added on to Minnow's question. He would never honestly deny the opportunity to sleep beside both of his partners, and especially when pass upon the opportunity to snuggle with them. Yes, he said, a little too quickly. Oh, thank God. Minnow's voice was barely audible. Gar squinted at them for a few seconds, before Tilly started to gesture for them and Gar to come to the bed. Come, come cuddle, she said, as she kept moving her hands. Gar looked back at Minnow again, before he started walking towards the bed. Tilly slid back to one side, and Gar nestled himself in the middle. It felt nice to have his back against the pillow, and not so exposed. Minnow moved up next to him, waiting for him to lay down before doing the same and nestling themselves onto his chest, which Tilly did too after only a moment. This is so cozy. I was so right for asking. Minnow sighed. Gar shifted slightly to sink further down. You're also very warm, he mumbled. We should do this more often. Minnow nuzzled into him. Agreed. Tilly wiggled slightly, like she was trying to get more comfortable. It is nice. Gar nodded slowly. I can tell you think so. Minnow had a dreamy tone to their voice. How? He asked. You're purring. Which, by the way, sounds incredibly loud right now. I feel like my face is getting a massage. Minnow rubbed their cheeks against him the smallest bit. I like it. Do you not know when you start purring? Tilly lifted her head up to look at him. Gar felt slightly stupid to be asked that question. I usually do. It's involuntary. Sometimes I don't realize... He tried to explain. 
realize it or don't, I love it. Minnow had their eyes closed and were pressing their ear onto him to listen closer to the sound of the rumble. It's nice to know you're happy. Gar looked up at the ceiling as Minnow and Tilly nestled themselves the smallest bit closer to him before settling down where they were. This felt very strange for him. The whole day he had felt that way. He wasn't expecting his partners to come over in the morning, or to take him to a museum, or to get him such thoughtful gifts. He hadn't expected anything from Hope or Whimsy either, but they'd given him a nice surprise. It was nice that they went out of their way to do something for him. Even when doing things like visiting the museum was probably not as fun for them as it was for him. It was also nice to get to spend the night with his partners, and for Minnow to be comfortable enough to show him what they did. He wouldn't say it out loud either, but he also appreciated what his partner said about him, as awkward as it was to hear. He liked knowing his partners thought he was pretty, or whatever else it was that they said. Even if they hadn't really actually gotten a good look at his back, the thing he'd been worried about, it still felt nice to know that they thought that. He brought his gaze back down from the ceiling to see Tilly and Minnow with closed eyes and smiles. Not yet asleep, but getting there. He slowly closed his own eye, figuring he should probably be trying to get some sleep too. He hoped the next morning would be fairly boring or mundane, so he could have an excuse to do essentially nothing. He eventually found himself drifting off to sleep, thinking about a few things, but mostly about how warm he felt pulling the blanket over the three of them a bit further before he let himself actually fall asleep. Of course, he slept for about an hour before Minnow nudged him until he awake about something. He didn't mind that, though. <laughs>